Hello YouTube community, my name is Doug and uh, I've recently tried the Freestyle Libre 2. Uh, I'm not diabetic, uh, constant glucose monitor and uh, I'll provide some context as to why I've done that but really the reason I'm doing this video right off the cuff, did not plan on doing a video on this is because the results were really shocking and I'd like to share that with you. Um, let me give you a little bit of context. So I'm 54 years old. Hey, by the way, working in my coffee shop that I built for myself. Uh, That's where I do all my work. I love, love being down here. Uh, 54 years old, uh, consider myself to be pretty healthy. I work out five days a week. Uh, just two months ago, did a half marathon with my daughter and uh, really, really try to eat well. Like I'm not crazy about eating well, but uh, like go for nachos and wings with my wife. We enjoy life. But for the most part, try to make good decisions. I'm also what I would call a fitness and nutrition enthusiast. It's, it's a hobby I have for the last 10 years. So, you know, I read a lot of books, a lot of uh, research papers, uh, generally interested in the subject of, of insulin. What really got me onto that was Gary Taub's book I um, uh, read about 10 years ago or 12 years ago, Good Calories, Bad Calories. I recommend everybody read this book. It's, it's, it's a tough read, you know, it's, it's thick, it's big, tons and tons of research, but I really think it's, uh, it sort of changed the whole landscape on, on what we know about, about nutrition. But anyways, he, he debunks so many myths that so many people believe about nutrition. And I mean, those myths obviously still exist, right? Everybody gives you sort of a different view on what, what your nutrition is. But he isolates insulin as the causal factor for metabolic syndrome through just tr tons and tons of research. And if you don't know, metabolic syndrome is a term they use to group common diseases that we see uh, in, in modern society based on our diet. So that's going to be cancer, dementia, um, obviously diabetes and more. And uh, he really goes into, you know, how that fat, uh, low fat craze started through really um, Ansel Keys was, was really behind that with a seven country study looking at heart disease um, that, that really used some impaired research to, to draw those conclusions, which led to, um, in my opinion, from my reading, that, you know, the, the, the explosion of, of diabetes that we're seeing in our society today, which is, you know, three to 400 percent. Anyways, um, you know, lots of other great books. I've read on the subject, uh, Robert Lustig, uh, Metabolica was really good. Jason Fung's uh, Diabetes Code, great book. Um, I've read a lot about fasting. I, I like to fast, I generally fast one day a week, just finished a four day fast several weeks ago. Um, and keto, of course, I think is pretty interesting. Very, very misunderstood. And people are using it wrong, don't really understand what ketosis is, but you know, it's super interesting. Anyways, you can probably see why then I'm, I'm sort of interested in this subject. The latest book I've, I've read is The Glucose Revolution. Um, and this was by Jesse Inchospe. I'm not probably saying that wrong. I'll give you a nice close up of it. And what I liked about this book is it, it's really accessible. A lot of the books you read on nutrition, you, you need to acquire sort of a new vocabulary to really understand it. But she, she's got a real knack for breaking things down into simple terms that we can understand and that we can share with people and the people can, can understand. Really what she does that's interesting, I mean, if you go to just about any page, you'll see that she's, she's looking at, rather than insulin, because that's a complicated subject for people, it scares people, let's just talk about um, glucose in our blood, right? So when we, when we eat, what's the glucose curve look like? And she compares eating different foods, and not, eat, not only different foods, but foods in a different order, and sort of looking at the corresponding difference in the glucose curve that it creates in our body. Glucose, of course, leads to insulin, and insulin then, we can only store fat in the presence of insulin. So, um, very interesting. So I read the book, and I thought, I gotta try some of these things. This sounds interesting. Oh, by the way, so, so she did this, she drew these conclusions because she herself put on a glucose, a constant glucose monitor. So like me, she's non-diabetic, um, very studious, uh, likes for, as you can read in the book, um, you know, for, for, for good reason, is very concerned about health. Um, so she wears a, this con constant glucose monitor and she comes up with some really great hacks to flatten that glucose curve. So um, I was super interested. I would like to, uh, I'd like to do this for myself. So I bought myself the, uh, the free Freestyle Libre 2. Now I didn't plan on making a video, so I've thrown the box out, but I still have the applicator right here. So this is the applicator that comes with it. Essentially, you have a little thing. It actually looks like one of those coffee, um, a little bigger than one of those instant coffee pods that you have. You peel the top off, you unscrew this, you stick this in, you line this up on the front, you, you stick it in, it grabs it, and now it's placed inside of this. 
And you can't actually see the spike that protrudes. I don't know if they do that for psychological reasons or what, but um, so you don't see that it's going to jab into your skin. But then you, you just pick up, you know, you, you pick a place that's, that's supposed to be right on the very, very back of your arm here. Um, and you just, you, 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 you clean it really well with alcohol and then you hold, you press it in until it clunks, makes a clunking sound. Then you're supposed to, some of the YouTubes I watched said, hold it for a bit. And as you pull it off, you then have your CGM installed. So you'll see that mine is right here on my arm. I also have a, uh, one of those protectors that I put on. Remember, these are $100 and they last two weeks. So when I started seeing the edges of mine peeling up a little bit, the first day I had it, I quickly ordered on Amazon some of these, these uh, patches that are supposed to help them stay on stronger. And, and you'll note that mine's right on the front of my arm. And in further reading, I can see it really should have been more, again, right here on the very back of my arm. And let me explain why I think that, I, I hope that's part of the problem. Just before we go on, I just want to just clarify one thing. Um, I'm, I'm not a, I, I never give nutritional advice to people um, because I've just found that it's such an evolving science. I think that what we believe today to be true in five years, we'll look back and go, you know, that was ridiculous. Just like we always have, we always do that. I mean, just think of the things that we've, um, you know, that we've done in the, in, the, in the eating fads that we've gone through. So books like this, I think they're good, they're educational but I don't read anything as gospel. I read things, I try them for myself. I see how it works with my own body, which I think is another variable that most people don't consider. And that's how I sort of develop my own understanding of nutrition. So um, uh, don't think that, um, you know, that, that I think this, this book answers all the, all, the, all the questions you have, because I don't think it does. Anyways, let's get back to the constant glucose monitor. So I installed this three days ago, super easily. It, it's painless. Uh, don't, worry about, don't worry about it hurting when you put it on. Uh, except for the pocketbook, $100 for this it only lasts two weeks, right? So, um, as I said, I placed it in a little bit in the wrong spot of my arm, and I'm a little concerned about that. But let me tell you, here's where this gets really interesting. From the very, very first reading, it has to sit for one hour, and then, oh, you install an app, you connect to it, and from the very first reading, if this thing is correct, I'm not pre-diabetic, I'm diabetic. Shock, right? Shock and awe. How can I be diabetic? Um, I eat well. I don't drink any sodas. Um, once or twice a week, I'll eat something not super healthy, but I work out lots. I've, I've got a good weight. Um, so when I started looking at these graphs, because um, it's forming a constant glucose curve right throughout your entire day. It takes a reading every 15 minutes. And every time you tap your phone on it, it, it grabs all the readings that it's captured and it has an eight hour memory. Um, so you have, to, you have to scan it at least every eight, every eight hours. But as you can imagine, I'm, I'm scanning every 15 minutes. Uh, I, I gotta figure out, is, is there something wrong with this? Is it gonna calibrate over time? Is it miscalibrated? I mean, I went on the internet and just started Googling like crazy. I'm hoping to find all these, you know, all these people are saying, oh, they're wildly inaccurate, they don't work. Um, or the, the location of where it's installed is wrong. No, none of those things are true. They seem to be really accurate. For the most part, they're calibrated well. You don't have to calibrate this brand. Some of the other ones you have to calibrate it. This one's pre-calibrated. Um, there's YouTubes of people sticking them all over their body. I haven't really watched them in detail, but it seems that the, the results, maybe this is the ideal location at the very back of the arm, but it doesn't seem to have a huge impact on your, on your glucose readings. So anyways, it occurred to me that uh, there's probably a lot of general interest in this. Uh, for example, if this is correct, and, and believe me, I'm hoping it's not, but if this is correct and I'm diabetic, uh, with how hard I work at being healthy, um, there's gotta be a lot more people, and statistics are pretty clear. Uh, I don't know them off the top of my head, but um, people who have uh, hypo or, or, or hyperglycemic issues uh, is, is roughly 88% 80, of the US population, and 70% of those don't know they have it. Um, so that's sort of not a surprise, but I just think it's just so stark. If this is true and you can, you can just simply wear this for a couple of weeks and, and, and be diagnosed as pre-diabetic or diabetic, I think at least in some of those people it would have a really positive impact on their lifestyle choices. So that's why I think it's important uh, that we do this. So that's why I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this video with no post-production. I have some videos I do in um, uh, YouTube videos in, in Spanish on nutrition. It's a ton of work to do all the post-production. I mean, this is just gonna be me sharing um, the results of, of what I find out through this journey, 
right? With my doctor's appointment tomorrow, with me trying to see if I can lower this over the next two weeks while this thing is still working. So um, in the doctor's appointment tomorrow, I'll go get um, an A1C test. And that's where they measure, um, A1C is, it measures the hemoglobin with attached glucose uh, over the last, because it's looking at your blood and, and cells live for about three months. It, um, it kind of gives you a longer picture of what your glucose average has been through that period of time, rather than, you know, when you poke your finger, it's a point in time, right? But now that I think about it, um, I probably should fast before, uh, before I go in, it's, it's at 11 o'clock, so if I don't eat tonight, he can still give me a fasting glucose measurement tomorrow. So the fasting glucose tells you uh, what you should be when you haven't eaten for 12 hours. And there's very, um, uh, the Di Diabetes Society has very specific ranges for where you need to be. I'm blown past all of those. When I wake up in the morning, my um, fasting glucose level is seven millim uh, millimoles per liter, um, which is hard because the app, the app that I'm using for, for, for the Freestyle Libre measures, because I'm in Canada, it measures it in the Canadian equivalent, which is milligrams per deciliter. So the math is, isn't terrible. It's, um, it, you times by 18. So, but you're always doing it in your head. And what's frustrating is the app doesn't let you change that. That you can go see the setting, but it tells you that it's set by your location. The only way to get it changed is to go, is to write an email to them and they'll change it for you. So I, I've actually done that. And what else I don't understand is that I do intermittent fasting most days and uh, I find it super bizarre after four hours or five hours of not eating in the middle of the day that I'll have a glycemic spike, boom, way up, way up to seven milligrams per deciliter. And uh, so why is that happening? I, I know the liver stores glycogen and uh, it does that because when we're, when we're out of, uh, it has to be, we have to be super me me metabolically flexible because if our brains are without um, glucose, we can slip into a coma really easily. So it converts it, this sort of compressed glucose called glycogen and releases it into the bloodstream. And, and it can also convert um, protein in, into, into glucose, but it shouldn't spike. I mean, it should moderate my uh, glucose up. It shouldn't be, I shouldn't be seeing these dramatic spikes in the middle of the day. So anyways, it's day three today, doctor's appointment tomorrow. Let's hope that this thing is just simply way out of whack, that it comes in, comes in clean. And I'll update you in the next video and uh, let's hope I'm healthy. If not, I'm gonna have to start some, uh, some remedial things in my diet and exercise and really think about how I'm gonna approach this.